people that you can say, uh, hey, they have a word though that they normally say or something without enterprise. What do you call that again? Wealth without enterprise. Eh? Talking about uh, Nigerians, most of them who are only waiting for their turn. Which Nigeria? Nigeria will not break. Me, we may never become senator. We may never become governor. We may never steal my own money. Oh, when you are going to Nigeria, no, we break now. Ah, no, 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 break up now. Let us wait till when me, I don't chop my own. Eh? Turn by turn, Nigeria Limited. You may never live long enough to be what you think you want to be. It is Nigeria. Of course, the motivator, people like, uh, you know, Canary Dino, you know, people who have wealth without uh, enterprise. They have uh, friends and admirers that they are motivating inside that same contraption. They do not possibly have any clue about to create wealth. But with the likes of uh, Dino displaying a uh, wealth with no source other than they were in politics, right? But they are also like, people like him are also coward, right? I want to show you a video. It's a collection, okay? Dino was displaying his card this, uh, uh, this morning. And he does that all the time. And the poor Nigerians are always there fighting themselves. Mr. Ma, what is the source of your wealth? As a Nigerian, typical Nigerian. You just, Dino, what is the source of your wealth? Eh? What do you do for a living? You know he doesn't do anything for a living, Okay. But he can tell you that uh, he has a stock, he has this, he has that, but buy whatever you can buy, okay? But in that same space, you see other fellow Nigerians that will fire you. Shut up your mouth. Eh? Every time you'll be asking for the source of uh, somebody's wealth, source of somebody's wealth. What is the source of your wealth? What's the source of your wealth? When he was poor, did you ask him what was the source of his uh, poverty? Oh, my Niger to Niger, they're going to find themselves like that. And somehow, somehow, they are praying to God to give them something like that, too. Wealth without any enterprise. Billionaires without any business. All just because they have the connection. Access. It's called access. Whenever they are caught, oh, my God, they are mostly cowards. So I have a combination of uh, Canary Dino's uh, video. In this regard, it was motivating those who are waiting for their turn short in Nigeria. And if I survive, you can't. All right? You can't. Hang on, hang on, hang on a minute. Yesterday, I was uh, pretty much uh, so uh, grateful to a lot of us who remember the day before yesterday. See, I told you, right? I appreciate every effort, engagement that you give uh, to uh, my videos, right? And indeed, they are mostly the reason why I always come back, okay? But listen, tonight, we are currently like about 1,700 on YouTube, right? Right. So do you mind taking it, you know, do you mind to take a minute by leaving that comment section, right? And let's see if we can actually get uh, this like down to 1000 can you do that for me you know i told you like you see i love the super chats no doubt i love all the kind of the comment the engagement i do i especially ask you to take a minute and go like that video i'll thank you for it later so let's go back there do you know
Make it two people one hour. Hey, amen. 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 Please hold it, hold it, I beg. Maybe by the time the the robber see the season now 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 move this time. Wait on my brother. I decided to mix both together, just kind of like a mid break, right? Did you see? Did you hear the breathing there? That was after he said uh, he escaped from the DSS. Remember that time that he said he escaped from the DSS and he lived on the tree for four days. And now he was on the tree for four days before they now found him. He is not like a Yebelo. Currently, now people don't forget about Yebelo. There was a court judgment yesterday uh, that said that uh, uh, uh effort to stop the EFCC from arresting him got thrown out. Okay. But yet, Yebelo, right now, EFCC and the rest, the rest of them will tell us that they don't know where he is. He said he can't be arrested. Or more, they don't arrest him more. But that was a Dino there. These guys are a bunch of cowards. So when they deal with themselves, sometimes, right, I kind of love to keep the record, okay, to show to those of you who see them as your role models, who see them as uh, uh, freedom fight activists. I love Aisha, Aisha Yesufu, who told uh, them that uh, Nigeria don't need any more activists. You have enough activists. If you see this one activist, if you see that one activist, this one act everybody activist. Instead of uh, asking for more activists, eh, you should all endeavor to push for active citizens. That's, that's a very good line. Eh? I like it. Instead of looking for activists who are mostly cash TV, hmm? they call them the human rights cash TV. So instead of looking for more cash TV, you should be encouraging more active citizens. Citizens who knows they are left from their right. Those ones who are not uh, famous for self-destructing themselves. Information that helps the people to decide. Make informed decisions. That's a power I like. And I think that's what I am doing here. Trying to make a lot of us more active. Because a lot of us are like, I'm always concerning. You don't concern me, Joe. Like a one true emperor. One true emperor would be like, Papa, I don't care. Is a lie. Yes. People will tell you, I don't care. I don't care what happened to you. Don't, 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 don't call me. Don't. It's a lie. They are the people who actually care most. I love listening to him, though. One true emperor. He's going to probably tell me later tonight and say, My ego, you don't understand. I mean it. No, you don't. If you do, you will stop watching my ego. But you really want to know what's going on with them. You do. You really want them to have that, uh, you know, that, that, that feeling of standing up. You wanted to see them. You want to provoke them to do that. People will tell you, I don't care. Please, uh, please now, one trip. I don't care. I don't care. Get out of here. Don't, don't ever, ever. Then the next thing, you just be like, uh, hello, Martinelli. Hello, Martinelli. Uh -huh. Sorry, Jari. You know, I told you I don't care about that. Uh, uh, is my Egun live tonight? Say, no, he's there now. Go and watch. No, but is he okay? Because I just want to check on him to make sure that he's okay. Oh, really? But I thought you said you don't care. No, no, not like that. I just, you know me now, you know. So I'm talking about uh, active citizens. Instead of you, all of you looking for activists. Are you not a human rights activist? Are you not an activist? 
Mayago is an activist. Ah, oh dear. Don't look for activists. Be a, become one. Become an active citizen. Because by having an enlightened, educated, and well-informed citizenry, a well-educated population, well, you can talk about a revolution. You can talk about a lot of things. In the atmosphere where people are intelligent enough to know what they want, you need to know what you want. You can't be doing kami, kami, kami. No, you can't be doing that with your life and your destiny. Because that's exactly what these guys have already mortgaged. They've stolen them from you. You can take them back. You can. But you can only take them back if you understand that they've taken something from you. They've taken the future from you. They, they are taking your youth away from you right now. The form that you are supposed to have at this age, you are not having them. Okay? You are hustling just to stay alive. You're looking for something to feed on, something that keep you alive for a while. There's no fun. You call it hustling. That's not fair. There's a reason why they said they should build for the coming generation so that they too will now build for the generation coming after them. Generation here was supposed to be building for the one coming, not steal from them, not borrow them into perpetual poverty, right? Like a perpetual damnation. You don't, come on, man. Nigeria has loan that will be repaid back for 100 years, which means, Baba, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten generations of Nigerians, if that contraption still exists, 10 generations are gonna be born into poverty. They're going to be born into poor education. They're going to be born into poor sanitation. They're going to be born into unsafe country. They're going to be born into the world that is going to be so harsh on them. You should be concerned. A lot of us will be gone. I will be gone. You will be gone. Listen to me. I am 40 years old, right? Well, over 40. I love saying it because I kind of love reminding myself, okay? Oh, my ego, you are 40. How long do you think you have left if you have any grace long enough that you have good health? Long enough? Maybe 40 years more. You will not be able to recognize me in another 40 years. I will be too old. Like that? Oh, maybe not. Because my, my mom used to tell me that, uh, you know, uh, you know what that means? Uh -huh. A well grilled beef. Well, greed beef, dry one. Keep it on. It would never have any maggot in it. It never goes bad. You know that? That's what my mom said. My mom said, I've got a nature that even if I live up to 100, I will still be like, Kongi. Fortunately, she's not here anymore. Because she had a similar body. She would have lived so long if she had access to better health care. Now, the health care that my mom and my dad despite the money that they could kind of pay to get that health care that wasn't there, killed them. It would kill me too if I was in that contraption. That's the destiny. There are many, many of our offspring, my brothers, my sisters, who are still in that contraption. No amount of money can save them if their own medical emergency should kick in tomorrow. My money can save them. Do you understand what that means? It simply means that uh, there are generations that will be born through me if they are born in that contraption, they will be born into poverty. And you know that poverty? It's not the poverty of you not having 1 million, 10 million in your bank account. It is not being able to have access to the standard, good standard of living. Do you understand that money can't really buy that? It is systemic. It's a system. It works for the rich. It works for the poor. It works for the powerful. It works for the powerless. It works for the religious. It works for the ungodly. System. It's called system. If it's not there, if it didn't date, it didn't date. Rather than put that system there, they've subjected our destiny and our future for the next 100 years into debt servicing. We are going to give birth to children that are going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be born into payment, payment of debts. Think about that. Isn't, is, is, is that even fair? If you think about it, is that fair? Is that the future you want to, is this the world you want to leave for your children? Oh, you're buying them another citizenship elsewhere, right? Passport elsewhere. Oh, my children are going to be Americans. 
Oh my, my, oh my. Your children can be Americans, they can be British, they can be anything. But in reality, they will always uh, call those places their secondary home. Uh, it is kind of like for preservation of your species, it could be a good thing. Nigeria will kill all of us anyway. So those of you who are probably going to have us spring outside there, the contraption, of course, you can sustain on, you know, your species for a while. But the long road to um, sadness is the fact that they will have no place to go back to and call home when these guys are done. That should get you thinking. Well, that's, called, that's what got me thinking, if you ask me. I mean, how do you explain a country of uh, 220 million people, they say? And it's also an educated country, which is a lie. And then you have uh, rogues in charge like this one who believes that it is the wishes of the people that was against the country, not their own decisions or the decisions they are making. Or some rabble rousers, some half uh, you know, poorly uh, educated uh, rogues that they put in charge of different uh, uh, agency and all that, making decisions. I'm talking about an embarrassing pronouncement. For example, oh, Nigeria, Nigeria caught at the Lagos airport, okay? They caught a, a machine, cryptocurrency machine. There are some people who want to come and use. Eh? To destabilize Nigeria economy, cryptocurrency machine. What does that even mean? Well, there's a report on it, but I'll show you. It's quite funny when I listen to it, too, but maybe it's not. Watch. The Muritala Mohammed International Airport Command has handed over 148 units of military drums valued at over 7 million naira and fake $1 million to the Nigerian Army and the Economic Financial Crime Commission in Lagos. These are the 1,250, uh, 1, 250, uh, uh, counterfeited dollars and then these are the cryptocurrency machines and their wallets. They are so tiny. You may think they are nothing, but they can do a lot of harm to the Nigerians' economy. On behalf of the Executive Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the Zonal, Acting Zonal Director of EFCC Lagos Command, I want to say thank you so much to the Nigeria Customs Service for the collaboration the Commission enjoyed from them. They make our work easier and the society a better place for us to work. The customs era controller handed over the drone to Major General Mohammed Usman, said the gadgets have capacity to stay in the air for 72 hours. So handed over the fake dollars to EFC chairman representative in Lagos. It simply means somebody in the serious is bringing them in. But we are happy and the custom is up to the attacks and uh, they are going to apprehend. I'm sorry, I've been laughing behind this scene, okay? But it's Niger Shashi, Shashi you get. So they caught, my sh they caught their drones. They said they arrested drones. You took some people's drone. Maybe because they didn't declare them, all right? And then they called the press. We found their drones. And we are giving the drones to the military. So the military came too. Oh, we are very happy with the custom for doing their job. I say, you see this cryptocurrency machine, eh? They can affect, they, they may look small, they look small, but they, if you know what they do, eh? they can ruin Nigeria economy. All of them illiterate in that place, okay? But they are entertaining themselves, they were entertaining themselves. It's an achievement. A arrested cryptocurrency machine. But cryptocurrency, crypto is a link, isn't it? Eh? But I like the one that they caught, I mean, you know, for them uh, discovering that fake currency. But that one is dangerous. So kudos, let's say kudos to them, okay? I mean, like, it's a very funny place, okay, Nigeria. Very, very funny place. When these criminals came to power in 2015, Nigeria was generating about 9,000 megawatt of electricity. They were distributing about 4,500. Half of that, yeah, half of uh, 9,000. It's such a shame, though, right, that they continue to tell you how much they generate and how much they distribute. And that's just to tell people that, oh, we still have some left, oh, but we'll distribute them later. I think it's a trick that has worked there for a very long time, right? Until APC came. Now, you know, APC is about propaganda and lies, okay? If APC tells you that uh, you can fly your aeroplane with uh, palm oil, if you tell them that that's not possible, 
APC will tell you that it's a new technology that it has not been used, but it's possible. Or they will tell you that it's already being used in China. And if you ask them to present to present the data for it, they will attack your family. They will call you Omo Ali or say you hate Nigeria. You don't wish Nigeria well. That's their trick. Now, in the last uh, <laughs> in the last eleven months, okay, Tifnubu has further destroyed uh, the uh, you know the power sector. Put it that way. Not only that, uh, Nigeria generates less electricity now. Five thousand or so is what Nigeria generates now. Okay, after billions of dollars spent by uh, Bokuari, APC, Now, not only that they are generating less, they are also sharing less. Now, these guys are now distributing something around uh, 2,500. Then they call them band A, band B, band C, another fraud. But that's just by the way. These same criminal people, this same criminal government, they have announced that they are investing some certain billions of uh, nye, 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 on, a, on CNG buses so that they can reduce the cost of transportation for you after the removal of subsidy. <laughs> you know what CNG buses uh, are? They are like uh, electric uh, buses. You need electricity to have electric buses. I'm electric buses, Abby. You do. But APC is assuring you that they are going to distribute Thousands of CNG buses to reduce the cost of transportation. People are clapping. Now, this is a Wale dance. Abi Wale, uh, Wale dance uh, is a dance to me. Anyway, you see, but they know what they are doing. Oh, sure, you get like they are economic uh, saboteurs. The economic uh, saboteurs. So, is the air wearing on their melt? I mean, helmet. After meeting with the IMF and World Bank for. Uh, these guys want to take a loan of $750 million. And because of the loan of $750 million, okay, that they will repay back in uh, 45 years. <laughs> I'm serious. It's crazy, right? So they will pay that money back later, okay? But for the World Bank to give them that money, they told them to go and increase the tax on telecommunication. All this is your phones now. All this is your MTN, Glow. All this is your telecommunications. This is chat, eh? you will pay more because they are, they've increased it now. They have increased the tax on it by three point uh, something percent. They tried it a while back. They removed it. Okay. But because they needed the, they need the 750 million from the pro promised. See, okay, hang on. That's how they rush you now, B. Sorry, it's because my time is rounding up too. Okay. I'm going to take calls soon. And that's why I want to make sure I quickly pass the info. But I have to say this slowly. Okay. Now, Tiflumbu said, uh, Wale Adons and the Kadobi Odudu Aime Fioli, right? They approached the World Bank and IMF, so they made a deal. That deal is that uh, they're going to give them $4.5 billion in a space of uh, two years. So they'll be giving them like, you know, $500 million, $200 million, $600 million, $700 million, like that, shout they give them $4.5 billion. That arrangement is there. So part of the arrangement was that they should go and remove subsidy, but now IMF is hearing that They've removed, I mean, they've restored the subsidy secretly, which will further bankrupt uh, Nigeria. Uh -huh. So uh, they now told them that, listen, $750 million is ready. But you need to go and increase. I mean, you need to go and re reinstate the telecommunication tax if you want to access this money. Okay? And guess what? <laughs> What do you think they want to use the 750 million for? Any idea? No? No? Well, they said they want to use it to fund the 2024 budget. That means you will never know what they use the money for, except what they say they use it for. So it's like a cash they want to hand over to them. So they will give it to them. But for them to access that money, they have to tax you. You see how it works? Now, there is no electricity in Nigeria. It is in darkness. In fact, the people of the Northeast of Nigeria, they just told them now that uh, they will do their best to restore their electricity by the 27th of May. I swear, that's what they have told them now. That means they are mostly, most part of that place are in darkness. IPOB just gave the EEDC. They call them the Eastern uh, Electricity Development Company or something like distribution company, EEDC. 
Intentionally, there is no power in the eastern part of Nigeria. Most parts. Intentionally, so IPOB was like, get out of this place if you can't give the people electricity anymore. But that same, that same frosters, they wanted to clap because very soon, electric buses are going to be plying your street. I want to see it too because we already, we already bought in the electric uh, buses in, the, in Glasgow. All over the world, people are already like going into it. But now people, we get power, we get electricity. When I get power, anyway, it was in Lagos to showcase that uh, the CNG buses are going to be assembled in Lagos and it's going to help the... Anyway, see, I'll show you. Today, there were 50,000 Naira at the um, market price or at the price at the filling stations of, uh, of, of petrol. On the other hand, the cost of CNG is about three times less. It's about one third, if not uh, one quarter. So you can, what you can fill for 55,000 or so, you can now fill for around 15,000. So that's a huge savings that will help reduce or maintain a lead on transport costs. So it's a very key initiative. And the thing about the CNG initiative, the Presidential Initiative on Compressed National Gas, is that it has taken time. We've all gone around and we have seen that these are not purchases of finished goods or finished products. It is assembly. So at the same time as helping uh, the, the um, inflationary effect, reducing the um, price of um, fare, well, at the end of the day, reducing transport costs to the average Nigerian as well as that is also helping to grow the economy so it's two critical um, um, aims are being achieved and what is important is that I've come to see what is happening with the CNG initiative where are the buses as Nigerians are asking so it drove few of them so the ones they are assembling in, they are assembly in Lagos right that one is called the, yeah, the CNG. So they are going to convert buses. Instead of using petrol, they will be using gas. 